I'm here with Saskia Steinegger, uh, Global Head of Digital Transformation for Bayer. Um, Saskia, you've just come off stage from your keynote. I believe you're talking about AI and life sciences, especially about like nutrition and things like that. What, what can you tell me about the keynote? Well, I think there um, are basically two things. One is that um, new technologies like AI will substantially change the way we do healthcare, the way we actually um, develop products or medicine, the yeah. way we diagnose patients, but also the way we treat them. So that's one thing which will significantly change. The other one I would say is um, that we actually collaborate now. So it's corporates, it's startups, it's vendors, everyone coming together to in the end use these technologies and in the end get the best product in the market for the patient. Oh, great. And um, you know, what are kind of the health, like the, uh, sorry, what are the data challenges of actually, you know, looking at things in life sciences? Obviously, working in pharma and, and healthcare and things like that is very data heavy, but you know, how, what are the challenges there in terms of that specific vertical? So I would say, um, if you think about, basically there are three things. So the first one is um, when it comes to bringing new medicine actually to the patients faster and more efficiently. Yeah. So what we see is, um, if you look at research, I mean, that's almost, if you have like tri experience trials, getting this to the market, you have a 99% failure rate. I mean, that's extremely high. So how can we now use these technologies like AI to, for example, move from in vitro, what we say we have the actual research lab, to in silico, which means doing it on the computer. Yeah. So that's one of the things where thinking about AI and how it can help us, it actually moves us from just doing all these very time consuming experiments to being able to model how, for example, cancer works. So we work with one startup, um, Tobin, um, basically on the computer and you can run millions of experiments within minutes. So that's one of the things where I would say getting it faster. It also helps um, the way how we can tailor medicine to understand, to be more specific in the treatment. Because we can identify, as you said, there's tons and tons of data. But what we can do is basically with these new technologies um, and the computing power and our um, what we move forward with research on biomarkers as well as the machine learning, if you combine all of that, we can uh, identify the so-called super responders and clinical trials much earlier. And what they can then do is to say, well, for this specific subgroup of patients, that treatment responds exceptionally well. So we can tailor it more and more, which is extremely important. And the third one I would say is um, diagnosis. So building support systems for our doctors to understand what do I see in front of me. For example, we have one which is uh, for CTEF. Um, it's um, a subset of pulmonary hypertension. So that means we have high blood pressure in your lungs and in your heart. And CTEF is like a very rare disease. So for the doctor to truly understand what he has in front of you, for example, a CT scan, that's something very challenging. And if you build now with AI, for example, support systems, and we just launched one FDA approved just this week. Right. So um, yes, I'm very happy. Um, so that's something where we basically support the doctor and say, as you look at the CT scan, they kind of pointed out it's a fully integrated, automated um, pattern recognition software. So it basically helps you to understand what you're looking at. And I think these three things, getting medicine faster to the patient, more tailored and to support the diagnosis, that's actually where we can improve healthcare a lot moving forward. So obviously you could be working with clinicians and doctors and, and you know health providers with the, over this. Um, you know, what are the challenges there is in terms of getting them to grips with these new technologies? I would say it's a mix. <laughs> some of them are very open um, and some clearly see the, um, I want to say the, the advantages. I think what you need to be very clear on is that it's both the experience of the doctor and the, on the other hand have the, uh, what I just said, support system or other technologies and only both of them together will actually uh, provide the best support for the patient. The other thing I would mention is um, what we are very clearly um, in terms of ethical standpoint, we say the final call is with the doctor. And if you see it from this perspective, it's kind of saying this is helping you to make the best decision. And I think then they are fine, but it's still integrating that. I and mean, the way they did uh, or provided healthcare since 10, 20, 30 years, that's of course a change, but I'm pretty sure we're getting there. I hope so. Um, and what are the challenges of that then? What are the challenges of really you know, getting started on this journey. I mean, obviously, a year or two ago, AI and healthcare and, and pharma and everything was kind of quite hypothetical. And the, you see the conversation, you know, even listen to you speak today about how things have moved more into the deployment and 
the real world issues. Um, so what kind of things are emerging now as, as you deploy that maybe weren't obvious a year ago or two years ago? Um, I would say, um, first of all, it has been, I guess, a journey for quite, actually for everyone. So the regulators, for us, the insurers, um, I think everyone coming together. Um, what's now more obvious is that we, in the past, it has been a company researching product, actually going through all the steps, launching it into the market, and you had a specific life cycle. Now we're suddenly all coming together and everyone is working on it. So that's um, different in terms of collaboration, that's one thing. But also think about the life cycles. I mean, if you have like a software, completely different case, you're moving it versus what you had before when you distributed through the sales channels, the sales rep and so on. So I would say it's collaboration. That's what changed a lot. And the other one is the pace of how you move forward, the iterative piece. So. Amazing, and um, you know, just to kind of wrap up, like what are you, obviously there's a big AI and business community here. Um, there's some people from health, but there's lots of people in other verticals. What, what are you really like looking to engage with when you come to AI Summit or you're looking at other events um, where there's this kind of community around here that isn't just in your industry? Well, first of all, sometimes uh, great so um, to have people you understand who you, what you're talking about. So yeah. <laughs> that's one thing. Um, the other thing is um, I always like to see how they push the boundaries of what's actually because AI I mean everything around that is just moving so fast. So what I love is to see what's the latest and greatest, yeah. and then see how we systematically can bring that back to healthcare because not everything. I mean we're an industry which is not on the forefront, yeah. so we're not like retail or the other Others. But what I can see is like where is top notch and then backwards seeing in our environment, in our sector, how can you apply it. So I love to see the groundbreaking things and then connecting it and also meeting nice people. That's, uh, that's all good. Uh, well, Saskia, thanks for talking to me today. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers.